All right, what's up? How's it going, everybody? Hey, I finally got about, I don't know, I'm about 99% completed on the upgrade that we did a while back in Lake Berryessa where we replaced the, uh, the AGM batteries with the Discover. And so I came back down and I got the network communication all hooked up. And I want to give you guys a quick overview of what we did. Um, and I can't show you the screenshots. Uh, I don't have my computer all set up to do that. But I can give you a quick overview of the benefits of running the Schneider... I'm sorry, the, the Discover uh, AES battery. Um, and we're running it in the open loop platform with Outback, but we have a Schneider Combox uh, hooked into it. So that way we can um, at least see more data from the battery. So let me a show quick you a quick overview. Got. So we removed the AGM batteries, if you saw my last video. We put the Discovers in. Um, I got everything up and running in like a full blown open loop system. Now, what this means is this means that the batteries are not uh, dynamically controlling the inverters or the charge controllers. Now, soon, uh, Discover has a product called the Link, which is actually going to access, I think, the charge controllers and allow it to actually regulate the charge off more than just voltage. Like it's actually going to tell them, hey, you can throttle up higher, you can keep giving us more, and then back off the solar for what it needs. So what we added yesterday was I came in, let me go back over here. So we have two different COM ports on the battery. We have COM1 and COM2. Um, COM1 COM being the AE bus, which connects all of the batteries together so that they can talk. And what this does is when you hook this COM link up, they actually self aggregate and say, hey, we have, we have 520 amp hours of battery storage here all together. So they know as a bank um, how much power they have. So once we hook that up and we have all of our terminators in to, to stop the cycle, then we come down and we go into COM2, which I usually try to identify, like I shrink wrap this cable here and over there to say that it's a ZAN bus connection. But what this is doing is this is expediting that data um, into the Schneider COM box. Now, um, if you had a Schneider Connect system, what this would do is it would dynamically control the inverters to adjust the charging algorithms. But in this situation, what we're doing is we're just injecting that data into the COM box. And that's allowing us to um, look at the internal cell voltage. Um, we're able to graph what the performance is. We can't yet see, uh, we can't re yet remote access that data, but we can see the battery charge levels of what we got. So uh, that's a quick overview. Um, the, the two different types of systems that there are again is open loop uh, where it has no communication or no dynamic control with the battery. So basically they're just working as kind of a lead acid replacement or if you add the com box, you can, um, you can still have some access and control but they're not actually controlling the hardware yet. And then again, the closed loop that we're calling that is where it has dynamic control of the inverters. And like right now you can really only do that with the Discover battery and the Schneider inverter like what I have on my system. But as a, a lead acid replacement right now, the the, uh, the Discover batteries paired with the Outback, it's a great performing platform um, and it's working well. Uh, the only glitches we had so far were user error by leaving uh, having some water run, uh, but that's an exciting story that if you follow my Instagram, you'll get to follow. So not all the fun stuff gets to go to YouTube. So again, thanks for watching the videos. Hope you like the, what we got going on and uh, thanks for following. Oh yeah, one more thing. I know that's not my normal sexy work right there. I didn't do any of that, but we're starting to kind of clean it up and going for, uh, that's gonna be in maybe like phase three or four. So thanks for watching.